Cole's Hacker 007. In today's video, I'll be doing an introduction into the Google Hacking Database, or GHDB for short. Now, the Google Hacking Database isn't a uh, database that lets you just hack Google. Instead, it really shows you the uniqueness and the, and the power um, behind Google's search engine. So on the site, they have a bunch of different things. Uh, they're all search queries. And these search queries will show you information um, just like Google normal search would be, except they're a little more interesting information. Things like web server detection, files containing passwords, uh, vulnerable vulnerabilities, um, even things like footholds. So basically people post their um, known search queries that pull up really interesting results, uh, oftentimes for vulnerabilities, etc. And you can go in here and check them out and then search them and and see what they do. So in this video, that's exactly what we're doing. So we're going to start off with the files containing passwords section. So these are all search queries that um, will pull up files that contain passwords. A lot of them look for things like at gmail.com and then a password field. So if someone basically posts a password online in a text file, uh, Google can get to it. So the first one here we're looking at is a static, it's an OLE link uh, that looks for Gmail and password. So these are things that are cached in the uh, OLE uh, system. Basically, uh, to replicate it, just copy the link at the top of the page and search it on Google. And now we can see um, a search query of different things that contain at gmail.com and password in a .ole link. So we can go through and click some of them. The first one is completely useless. It's just uh, some kind of advertisement for maybe a church. But if we go down a little bit, I already wrote this one up. This is a text file. And this one contains some information. Nothing really too interesting. I did find like one username and password in there. Didn't check or anything like that. But uh, nothing too interesting. So, so far the search hasn't pulled up too much useful information. But if we check a couple links down from that, we have this Excel document. So this Excel document actually has a list of using and passwords for a car dealership. Now I've blurred them out because uh, they could be still known passwords or still used passwords. Uh, and instead I actually have contacted them uh, asking to see if they've recently changed these passwords uh, because they're there. Um, but that is something, for example, guys, you see paste the URL or the search query and Google is able to find this Excel document somewhere on their web server that has all these same passwords for this dealership. So now we'll go ahead and check out a different category. So a very interesting one that I like looking at is pages containing login portals. So these are all search queries that can actually find like login pages um, for things that you really shouldn't be able to log into from the public or, you know, be able to find through Google. So the first one to look at is one that looks at a FTP server and does a secure login. It's hosted by the company. Um, what's the name of them? Move it. There it is. So basically what this search URL does is it finds um, FTP login pages for the Move It company. So again, we can just take that URL or that link at the top of there, Google that, and there we go. So we can go ahead and click a link. Now one interesting one that I found actually the third um, page is McDonald's login. So this is actually a McDonald's login for the Move It FTP server. Now obviously, I don't know the username and password, so I can't just, you know, log in. But having this page accessible from, you know, Google, for example, here allows uh, people who are trying to break into this system with different, you know, bots, etc., to actually run attacks on this login portal now because it is accessible. So this is something that like they would want to necessarily like, patch because ideally you don't want to have a login portal like this um, just wide open to the, you know, to the world. So now we'll go ahead and check out another category on the 
uh, Google Hacking Database. Uh, this time we're going to look at web server detection. This is probably my favorite one to look at um, because you can, get, you can find some pretty cool information. So for those of you who do not know, this is a PHP script called PHP System Info. It allows you to see a uh, web, web page of uh, your server status essentially. Now this specific URL query search actually finds um, PHP System Info web pages that are open to the public. So by searching it and clicking the first link, you can see here we have a PHP System Info uh, web page with information on this specific server. So on the right hand side, we can see what processor it's running. On the left hand side, we can see things like what version of uh, what OS it's running. So in this case, it's running CentOS. We can see what IP address it's listening on. Um, down below, we can see memory usage and file systems. So these are all things that are basically a uh, web or a, a system I would want to know on a daily basis. Um, now, when this is open to the public, it really isn't that secure because uh, depending on what information is given through this web console, uh, you might be able to find if someone's trying to break into the system, you might be able to find some known vulnerabilities in, for example, a certain version of the OS. So if they're running an old version of a Linux distro, they may have a known vulnerability. Um, for example, the kernel version, these are all things that really ideally to me and you aren't really useful, but to a skilled professional hacker, you don't want this kind of stuff just out in the open, accessible from Google. And I just did a quick little uh, type to IPN just into Google, and this is actually the website that it's hosting. So that server is actually hosting, looks like to me like a special effects and fireworks place. So we'll go ahead and click on another one. So we'll do the second link here. This one's actually for a school. So this one's, uh, you can see it by the EDU address. So this one tells us actually even more information than the last one did. Uh, you can see this one's running Ubuntu 14.04, long-term support edition. Uh, we can see the kernel version. Uh, this one's running an i7, an older i7. Uh, but this one actually tells us things like uh, USB devices, uh, PCI devices, all those things are actually live on the PHP site. So we can actually see all the connected devices that are actually plugged into it as well. So that again opens up to more things that um, more no you know known values and more things that could th theoretically be broken into. And this is what we were actually going to look at the whole time. This is PHP system info. It's essentially a PHP script that displays information about the system. So this is actually the thing that we've been looking at. Um, the problem is that the web developers or the system admins have made it public for us to see. And so that concludes my video guys on the introduction to the Google Hacking Database. Now I only covered three different categories, but there is many more categories in different search queries you can do. So I'll have a link to the uh, page below. You can go ahead and check them out. They're pretty cool and just shows you exactly how powerful Google really is. So uh, like I said guys, I'll have a link in the description below to the Google Hacking Database. Otherwise though, uh, let, let me know what you guys thought of this video. If you liked it, if you want to see more of these kind of videos or if you want to see different kind of videos, uh, definitely those, those below as well. Otherwise, thank you for watching and I will see you in my next YouTube video. This is the Hacker 7 and I'm signing off.